Okay, in this video, we are going to look at a very unique project. This is my electric lock pick, and it's made from an electric shaver. So you probably have a few of these kicking around, because when the blade and the screen need to be replaced, it usually costs more than the razor itself. So I have a couple of these laying around, so I thought I'd make an electric lock pick out of it. So I added on this, this blade, and it's made from a hacksaw blade. So you just draw your profile and then you can grind it down with an angle grinder to get this shape. Now I glued it on to the moving part of the, of the razor using uh, JB Weld. It's a two-part uh, mix. It's like epoxy. It hardens just like steel. And that's it right there. And I glued it uh, onto the moving part of the razor. Now if you have two billiard balls on a pool table and one is labeled 3 and other one is labeled 2 and you shoot the cue ball at the ball labeled 3, the kinetic energy will be transferred into the ball labeled 2 and the, a ball labeled 2 will shoot away and ball 3 will be stationary. So this works on the same principle. So when we insert this into a lock, we're actually going to put this along the key pins and when we vibrate the key pins, they're going to hit the driver pins and the driver pins are going to shoot up as the key pins will stay stationary and when the driver pins move above the shear line the lock will open. Okay here's the lock where we can see the key pin inside the cylinder. Now there's a key pin and there's a driver pin and they extend into the body of the lock so now if we try to turn the cylinder it will not turn. But if we put the electric lock pick inside here and we vibrate the key pin the driver pin will shoot up above the shear line. This is the shear line here, and it will enable this cylinder to turn to unlock the lock. Now, a little while ago, I have a filing cabinet where I keep all my electronic equipment, and I lost the keys, so I needed to get into my filing cabinet. So that's why I made my electric lock pick, and it works very good on those type of locks. They're low security locks, like locks in a drawer or in a toolbox or in a filing cabinet. So that's what I used to unlock my filing cabinet when I lost my keys. Okay, here's my cabinet, and it's made by Commodore, the same company who made the Commodore 64. So I'll apply a little bit of tension to the cylinder, and then install the pick. And there we go. You can see the cylinder moving, and I'll lock it again. So there's tension. And there we go. Okay, using the electric lock pick on a security lock that has security pins, like spool pins or mushroom pins, will be a bit of a challenge. But some of the cheaper, smaller locks that are low security, you'll actually work on these also. Okay, Commodore was the manufacturer of my filing cabinet. So they made office furniture, they also made calculators. So this is one of their first calculators. My first computer was a Commodore PET. Then I bought a Commodore 64, then a VIC-20. And when I bought the VIC-20, I bought this. This is vic Fourth. So the VIC-20 had an onboard basic interpreter. So when I plugged this into the VIC-20, I had an operating system. I had a fourth operating system. This is where I started to write programs in fourth. And later on, Tom Zimmer wrote FPC for x86 processors. And I used that a lot for a lot of my projects. So that's how I started programming in fourth because I realized I could do a lot of things that nobody else could and I still program in fourth today. Now the techniques in this video are not to be used for illegal purposes so if you need to open a lock, it's a security lock, call a locksmith and he'll come by and open it up for you.